Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Nikki, and I'm really excited to talk to you about how to use GraphQL with serverless. So I've been working for the, the Thomas Cook Group, um, and we've been building a next generation holiday search platform for which we've been using a completely serverless architecture with Amazon Web Services. And the really interesting thing about our project is um, an API facade, which is built with API Gateway, AWS Lambda, and GraphQL. So GraphQL, for those of you who haven't heard of it before, um, is an application query language that was developed by Facebook. And it offers an alternative to um, a traditional REST API. So there's a schema um, with a type system which you predefine. And the client can then request exactly the fields that it requires. And the server only sends back that data. And it's all sent back in a single trip to the server. So you can query multiple data sources through a single endpoint in a, in a single trip. And there's also some other really interesting features like introspection, which make your API self-documenting. So we've been running a GraphQL server as a Lambda function, which um, is triggered by calls to a single endpoint on the API gateway, which we've called slash GraphQL. So taking a closer look at the architecture, um, there's a UI, which is um, a static website on S3. This makes calls to a single endpoint on the API gateway, which is GraphQL, which then triggers the GraphQL server Lambda function, for which we've chosen the JavaScript implementation and Node.js. Um, so the GraphQL server acts as an API facade, so it delegates the data fetching to multiple other microservices, which are each um, deployed as separate Lambda functions. So GraphQL um, takes on the responsibility of distributing the data fetching based on the query, aggregating the results, and then sending this back to the client. So for each type in your GraphQL schema, you can specify a resolve function. And this uh, resolve function actually fetches the data for that type. So each of these resolvers can map to a separate Lambda function. So unfortunately, I can't show you the GraphQL server we're using in production. But to give you an idea of what it looks like, I've built a serverless GraphQL jukebox. And I want to show you what um, a GraphQL API facade looks like. So starting at the handler for the Lambda function, the client sends a query and variables in the event object. And these are resolved against the schema, which you have predefined. So here we're using the GraphQL NPM module to um, actually carry out the, the query. So the schema um, defines what queries the client is allowed to make and what data that the server can send back to the client. So there's two things that the client can query for, suggestions and a playlist, which are like get requests. And then there's a mutation, which is like a post request, so they can add a track. And each of these queries has its own type. So here, the suggestions type returns um, objects uh, of suggestions list type. So these are all the properties of a song that you might want. And, and the interesting thing here is the resolve function. So taking a look at the resolver, we can see that it invokes another Lambda function. And here, this Lambda will query a third party API to get song suggestions back for you, and which are sent back to GraphQL and, sent, and then sent back to the client. So if I was to send a query, which is um, asking for song suggestions, and specifically only the name and the artist, and I also send query variables, I would get a response that looks something like this. So an array of songs with just the name and the artist. So we really think this is a new way of building serverless APIs. So no matter how many backends your app uses, the client will only ever see a single endpoint um, with a simple self-documenting API. So if you want to have a look at the code, it's all on GitHub. So um, please um, go have a look and try it out yourself. Um, and if you have any questions, tweet me. I'm Nikila Ravi. Thanks very much. <laughs>